Hello, good evening, and hello. My name's Tom Miller, and this is HRTV News. This week's top stories. Dong. Holy Rosary Catholic Voluntary Academy. Part of the St. Ralph Sherwin Catholic Multi-Academy Trust. But what does all that mean? We talk to Sean McLafferty, CEO. Dong. We take a look at this week's goings on around the school. Dong. Holy Rosary TV, full of fun and frolics. We look at what's been happening online this week. Dong. And finally, we take a look at what you and you have been up to while you've been at home. Hello, good evening and hello. Our top story this week. Since becoming part of the St Ralph Sherwin Catholic Multi-Academy Trust, it might seem like not much has changed here at Holy Rosary, but behind the scenes, we've become part of a much wider and stronger community. We head into another Zoom meeting to chat with the big boss. Hi, Sean. Thanks for being on the show. I imagine it's great to meet me. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Yes, I'm delighted to have this opportunity to speak to you this morning. So just briefly explain to us, Sean, what's your role at the Academy? Okay, well, I, I'm the CEO of the St. Ralph Sharon Catholic Multi-Academy Trust. And for some of our younger viewers, they might not know what a CEO is. Essentially, I'm responsible for the 25 schools in terms of standards and what, what they achieve. And my, one of my roles, it's multifaceted really, is to provide the schools with the resource that ensures that those children, all the children, achieve to the best of their abilities. Let's put it simply. You know. Good, good. So, Sean, what does your day look like? What, under lockdown or just typically? When yeah, working? while you've been in lockdown. Tell us what's been going on. Okay, it's a very interesting day. I still have numerous meetings, but they're, as you'd expect, all done via MS Teams. Uh, I get up probably around about seven o'clock, have a cup of coffee, come down, check my emails. Uh, my first meeting is probably half eight, nine o'clock. And then I have meetings planned throughout the day. I, I try and ensure that I get out and go for at least one walk, perhaps two during the course of the day, just to stretch my legs. Because I find sitting facing this computer mm. all the time, I, I get a sore back and I have to get up and walk around. So that, that, that's typically my day. It might finish half four or five o'clock, might have some evening meetings as well. And then there's catching up on emails of the day. Just because we're not out there in our schools or at St. Catherine's or St. Margaret's in our offices, that doesn't mean that the meetings grind to a halt. So lots of decisions are going on behind the scenes. We've got to be supporting our schools and our staff are on the front line. You know, the pupils are in school, teachers, head teachers are in school. So mm. we need to be, be ensuring that we're providing them the resource and the support they need to, to, do what, to, to do what they're doing, but doing it safely. That leads me on nicely, Sean. How does the St. Ralph Sherwin Catholic Multi-Academy Trust support the children that attends its schools? It's actually a very simple answer. My job is to ensure that you have the best teachers in the classroom and the best leaders leading your schools. And we also have to ensure that you have the resource, the staff, the head teachers have the resource they need to support you in your learning. So it's about, I, I, I see it essentially as ensuring that we've got the best leadership that we possibly can have in our schools. And I, and I believe that's the case currently. So that's how we ensure that those lessons and those pupils in those schools are getting the best deal from being in the trust. Good. Sean, what, uh, what have been the most significant challenges that the CMAT has faced during lockdown? Mm. I'd say initially when lockdown was announced, we had to invite in children of key workers and vulnerable children. Now, I think one of the big challenges was ensuring that those children, their parents and the staff felt safe. I think that was a huge one. I also think 
as the lockdown's extended now into week 12, week 13, ensuring that our staff and pupils and parents still, still feel connected, part of a community, the school community first and foremost, so ensuring that that's going on. Uh, I think the home learning has been important to ensure that that's been a good standard across all 25 schools. I know we've got some excellent examples of what's going on across the Trust. So I think those three spring to mind initially as, as, as the major challenges that we faced, yeah. And of course, the question on everybody's lip, Sean, is um, how are you planning for September? What do you think schools will look like when we come back after the summer holiday? It's a good question and we're all waiting for, for more guidance from the government, but in its absence, we, we've got to plan because, you know, come, come July, early July, parents will want to know what, what do timetables look like often with the children being school staff want to know as well. Um, I, th I think looking ahead to, to September, I think all of us would agree there's going to be a mix. Social distancing will probably still be in place, so there'll be some face-to-face -face as well as some home learning going on and we've had discussions with all 25 leaders in our schools and we've asked them to have initiate discussions with the senior leaders and with their colleagues about what's worked best over this lockdown period because there have been some benefits in terms of communication and learning and what I'd like to do is just take the best aspects of that and transfer them on to what we're going to be doing in September. So uh, at the last meeting I had with the head teachers I'd asked them all to think about what they wanted for their school communities in terms of the school day and what it looked like. I wanted to give them the freedom to be creative and think outside the box. So they were pulling together their ideas. We were going to draft a document together and then share it with, with all the colleagues within the trust, all the leaders within the trust. And I'm actually leaving it down to individual heads to decide. All I've said is I need to know that every child and every year group and every school has a degree of face-to-face -face learning. I think mm. that's important. What that looks like, I don't know whether it's five days, four days, three days, it will depend on a number of factors. Distance learning being key, availability of staff, size of rooms, a number of factors. But yes, we, we, we need to, we're moving on to a different phase and we want to ensure that as much and as far as we can, that pupils are, are in school. That's what we'd like. Mm. Good, good. Sean? What's on the horizon for the future of the CMAT? Um, looking ahead, I think there's a number of things we, we need to maybe get to grips with. I think improving digital learning is important. Um, ICT infrastructures, um, we're good, but we can be better. And the trust is going to be investing heavily in that whole area next year. I think uh, mental health and well-being of pupils and staff is another big area that, that, that's, that, that's important and we need to ensure that we're supporting our parents and supporting our pupils as well as our staff as well uh, in our schools. Um, other areas that we need to look at, an another big one, and it'll come out in this CEO video message tomorrow to staff, is the promotion of equal opportunities. I think, I think we need to be doing more in that area. Uh, I think we've got a very diverse and unique mix of staff and I want to ensure that our, our, our schools and our governing boards reflect the richness of our school communities and I think there's more we can do in that area. So yes, that, th those are off the top of my head some priorities for us. Fantastic, fantastic. Sean, before you go, you've got the opportunity to speak to all of the children here at uh, Holy Rosary. Is there anything that you'd like to say to them as we finish? Yeah. Well, first of all, sorry that I haven't been into your school and, and seen you for, for the last three, four months due to the lockdown period. I hope you're bearing up. I think you've got fantastic leaders and fantastic teachers at your school. So I'm sure from what I see online that your, your learning experience, even though you're not in school, has been continuing at home. And I, I just thank you for your patience, the, the, the patience of your parents as well. And I look forward to welcoming you all back as your teachers do in September, when hopefully we can get back to something that looks more normal than it is at the moment. Sean, we know you're a busy guy. We appreciate you coming on the show. So thank you very much. Okay, my pleasure. Thank you.
We are back in the swing of things here at Holy Rosary and the phase return has brought about some kind of normality for the children that have returned. We catch up with Miss Sanderson in the Year 6 bubble to find out how everything is working. Hi everyone, it's Miss Sanderson. I'm currently sat in the Year 6 classroom. Um, our bubble has gone home for the day. I've been here with Mrs Duke, so I just thought I'd let you know what we've been up to today whilst we've been in school. So the first thing we do, obviously once we've washed our hands, is we open up our universal planning document. So I look at the one prepared by Mr Hancock uh, and obviously that details all of those lessons that we're accessing for year six so that everybody has the same opportunities. So today for us in maths, we were looking at why it's important to save money, uh, why banks can be really important when you're considering where to put your money and possible problems that may arise such as scams. And we extended that out. We talked about budgeting money in the future and it gave the children a real insight into how expensive things can be and what the cost of living generally uh, can be as well. For English, we were doing setting descriptions, so we followed the Oak National Academy lessons for that looking at figurative language, similes, metaphors, personification, that sort of thing. We've had some really, really nice sentences and paragraphs uh, written about the scene that we were looking at. We had liturgy this afternoon on HRTV, which was really, really nice. I always find that really calm. It's a really nice way to start the afternoon and it leads beautifully into the RE lessons. Obviously, Year 6's topic is reconciliation at the moment. So that's our day to day really, we've been having a few breaks throughout, making sure that we're getting plenty of fresh air where we can, that's really important. But apart from that, we're doing exactly the same as you guys are. So the only other thing to say is how much we miss you all. It's, it's a strange place to be without all of the children. You are the heart and soul of this place. So the sooner we're all back together, the better. And I especially miss 5S. Sorry everyone else, but I do. So. Take care and hopefully we'll see you soon. It's nice to gather around the wireless as a family and listen to the latest episode of The Archers. But on the days that grandma and grandpa aren't around and you need a little bit of excitement in your life, us cool cats, we turn to the YouTube. Especially Holy Rosary TV. Let's take a look at what's been going on this week. On Monday, we start the week with the listening hour, still focusing on transition. On Tuesday, the Gruffalo's child was read to us by Mrs Rodden, chair of the trust board. On Wednesday, Mr Withy read us a rousing rendition of the Gruffalo in Scots. Don't forget, every Friday we have our praise and worship assembly. And to end the week, Mr Brogan gives us all of the important information that we need to know. Before our final story, let's head over to Miss Smith for the weather. I've told him I don't even work there anymore. So she, she doesn't work here anymore? And finally, Alan Titchmarsh hasn't got nothing on me. While I've been off school, I've been heading into my garden every day, growing some herbs, looking after my fruit and keeping an eye on my veg. The question is, what have you been doing to keep yourself busy while you've not been at school? Well, let's go and have a look what you've been up to in part one of our regular feature. What have you been doing to keep yourself busy while you've not been at school? Louis in year three has been preparing some of his favourite meals. Lottie in year four set herself the challenge of cycling the route of the Inca Trail, 26.2 miles, and to walk the distance of Hadrian's Wall, 90 miles. Incredible scenes! Jordan in year two has been cracking on with his comprehension work. India in Foundation Stage 2 has been spending lots of time reading some of her favourite stories. 
And finally, Olivia in year four has made herself a jellyfish. Wibble wobble, Olivia. That's all we've got time for today. Thanks for watching. And remember, loving heart, strong mind, stay alert. Talk to my agent. Sean McLafferty. He's agreed to Zoom. Fine, I'll do one more. <laughs>